I don't want to say we're different from the world. I'll say this. We are the world, right? Race, different culture, um, different value systems. The difference between us and the world is that we come together and we live it out. That's different. You see, in the world that we live in today, you push away what is different. You push away what you don't like, right? Right? And so, and so what is different about the church is we're saying, hey, we've figured it out. Unity is in Jesus Christ. We have different life. We have, we're different because of our lifestyles. We're calling sin, sin. We have, we have, we have a worldview that we hold on to. And then Jesus says in John, in John 13, 35, the world will know us by our love. And so we get to draw people in just by our very nature as a church body. Yes, we will go out and do evangelism this year. Yes, we will do all these things. But just who we are is a tool to bring people to Christ. Acts 1 says, but you will, see, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses. So as the local church, what we truly believe about this value is that we are continuing the story of God. We are the hands and feet of Jesus on earth. And God equips us to reach his people, as we saw in the second time. And it's, and it's really mind-blowing that God does this because God doesn't need us to do this. Um, Elena Greenlee, who writes for the Odyssey, which is a Christian um, type of blog website, she says this, God allows broken people to form a community, a church, and speak on his behalf. The local church is important for these simple reasons. We are allowed the privilege of working on the story of God. We are the public manifestation of God's glory. We are his example. Our witness will draw people near to God or push them away. And that is an impact that should humble us before our Lord and also realize just how important our job is. So that's what we're saying. Uh, we value the local church. Next week we're going to talk about church membership. What we're, what we're saying about, about we value the, the local church is we understand how important church is. How important it is for us to be in unity. The world is pulling us in all types of ways, all, all different ways, right? I, I know the world is pulling me, right? My time and my money, all different ways. But the church is not just something to add to another list of things that we're juggling in our life. The church is the number one thing in our life. It gives purpose to our lives. Sunday gatherings should be the pinnacle of the week for a believer, not something that we may or may not come to. Especially since the spiritual gift that you receive is for the church body. So we value the local church because it's God's plan to display his glory to the nations. Through the church, Jesus has decided to make his name known. So it's a privilege. It's not a sacrifice. It's a privilege to be a part of the church. When we count, all Christ has done for us. And so the last value that we have, we, 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 <laughs> we just called it, um, we're trying to be catchy, but we decided to call it everyone, right? We, we call it everyone. We value everyone. Genesis 1.27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And in Romans 3.23, for all have said and fall short of the glory of God. And then we get to the end of the Bible, Revelation 7.9. After this, I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and people and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in right, ro right robes with palm branches in their hand. So what we mean when we say we value everyone is that we want to have eyes like Jesus. We want to see people how Jesus sees people. What we know is that all people are created in the image of God. And what we also know is that all people have sinned against God. Yet in the end, we see many from all nations standing around the throne. Some say if you, if you don't like people or different people, it's going to be miserable for you. It's going to be miserable for you because there's going to be so many uh, diversity in God's culture circle around the throne. And it's awesome because God is not a respecter of person. But in his wisdom, what he does is he brings together many people from different races and backgrounds. And he adds them to this beautiful spiritual portrait of his family, of God he is actually creating. 
And as I heard in Life Group this Friday from one of our sisters, is that the gospel is radically inclusive. Radically inclusive. And I love that because it's, it's what scripture actually portrays. Romans 1.16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to, to the Greek. So in Jesus, the outcast of society actually has hope. The Pharisees, they could never understand this. They could never understand Jesus and his message of spending time with sinners. And I would say the Pharisees in the church today, they can't understand this either. And they never will. You see, through one man came death. And through Jesus comes life. So we are equal in creation. And we are equal at the foot of the cross. So we want to celebrate, we want to celebrate diversity. We want to fight for the rights of the unborn. We want to stand up against racism. We want to help the poor. We want to fight for the rights of women. And we can go on and on and on because all people are created in the image of God. And they are valuable. And they all need a savior. That's what we want to see people how Jesus sees people. So to close this out, I just want to get some application of that's in the air. How does it look on the ground? As I said at the beginning, it is through the power of the Holy Spirit and our shared values that we are able to become the church that God has called HBC to be. But the key word there is shared values. A team with different goals can't win. Talking about our values and saying these are our values doesn't mean that it goes from our head to from our from our head to our heart. We need to be intentional, praying for God to change our hearts to value the Scripture, value seeing your your brother and sister next to you grow in Christ. Value the local church and value everyone, no matter where they come from. But as a church, we, we, we want to be intentional, intentional as much as we can as human beings. And so for number one, for the authority of Scripture, when it comes to the authority of Scripture, we want to preach the word as top priority. The word of God, you see, is food for daily use, not just cake for special occasions. It is a core value. So when I preach, I do what they call expository preaching. I, uh, listen, I have a lot of great ideas. I, I think I have a lot of great ideas. I think I have, my wife says I have some good ideas. Um, but it doesn't matter. We preach the word, not, not the ideas. We believe like the apostles that the word of God works in hearts and changes hearts, not the thoughts of men. The word of God is a compass that will always lead in the right direction, not the pastor's messages. The Word of God is a mirror to the soul, and it causes us to speak on issues that we actually normally would avoid. You see, when you preach the Word of God, and I would say, I know, I'm, I'm team expository, if you preach in, that, in that, 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 that vein, so to say, you'll run into stuff that you really don't want to talk about, but you have to talk about. And so, that's what we want to do. I love what the reformer Martin Luther said about this. He says, the work of the true Christian church is the work of of the word communicated by every available means. So he says the work of the true Christian church is the work of the word communicated by every available means. So what that means for us would be is we want every area, area of ministry we do in the life of all the members here of HBC to really value the authority of scripture. So typically what we'll do is we'll, we'll go through a book of the Bible together throughout the year. And you know, we'll pray, and, we'll, and we'll, we'll look at all the ministries that we're doing and saying, okay, what are you teaching on right here? Is that the Word of God, or is that you? you know, we we want to make sure that the Word of God is being taught all through this church. For believers' spiritual growth, we want to be intentional in discipleship making and also relationship building. We want our pastors and our elders and our teachers to be convinced that they are to be creating more disciples to replace them, not building up their own kingdom. We must not judge our success by how the church has grown in numbers. We have to judge our success by how many people are growing in their knowledge of Christ and their love for their brother. That's a totally different worldview. We want to make sure we are creating avenues for believers to grow and serve, using our time and our finances to see believers actually grow in faith. The local church. We can say we value it, but to be intentional about the local church means we have to take it seriously. John Piper says this, the way we just demonstrate God's wisdom to the world and to the host of heaven is by being the church Christ died to create. 
So we need to do all we can to make sure that HBC is looking like the people of God is called to be. We can no longer overlook sin in the church. We can no longer allow division or confusion uh, to go without accountability. We want to take church membership seriously. We want to look at our culture and see if we truly are who we say or we think we are. And what we will find is some beautiful, beautiful things and some beautiful traditions that we need to, to keep and, and, and be thankful for those. And we may find some things that are just ugly that need to be destroyed because it dims the light of Christ. And we need to have the strength to do that. We need to look at our finances and see if our money is going to what we truly value. Money is always, money's the best way to see what you value. It always is. Look at your bank account after this. And you'll see. Look at your statement. This is what I did. I mean, I remember one, one year, I was just like, man, okay, I said I want to do this, and my bank account is saying this, right? And that's how I got involved in, in individual mission giving, by looking at that, by having men around me saying, hey, brother, why are you not talking? You see what I'm saying? What do you value? We want to be intentional as well in fellowship. I hear you guys used to do a family worship night. Do you guys remember that? Okay. Let's do another church. <laughs> no, it was here. We need to get back to doing those things. And we're, we're accepting all ideas because we believe God has given you to HBC for a reason. To start investing in the local church. And then everyone. Luke 5, 31 to 33. And Jesus answered them, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So we must see the world and our purpose as Jesus saw the world and his purpose. He came to destroy the works of the devil and to, and to proclaim that the kingdom is coming, that mankind needs to repent. So we must believe that the gospel we preach is powerful enough to change the direction of a life that's headed to hell to the love of God and to the embrace of God. We have to believe that the gospel that we preach can actually do that. So we must not be scared of, of darkness. Uh, one verse that I love from 1 Corinthians 5, 9 through 10, this is, this is Paul. He's speaking to the Corinthians, and he says this. I wrote to you in my letter not to associate with sexual and moral people, not at all meaning the sexual and moral of the world or the greedy and swindlers or idolaters, since then you would need to go out of the world. What Paul is saying is, I didn't mean to separate from the world. I meant to separate from Christians who say they are Christians but live in moral lives. If you're trying to avoid sinful people, you need a rocket ship. <laughs> that is what Paul is actually saying. So when we say we value everyone, what we are saying is that rich or poor, black or white, all people need the gospel. God is not a respecter of persons, and neither should we be. So we need to be intentional about this, but this one is a funny one because all of them, but this truly is a work of the Spirit, speaking from experience. You see, the more you gaze upon the beauty of Jesus and reflect on His Word and His work, the overflow will be humility and compassion and deep love for others. And you'll start to stand up for, Jesus, uh, for injustice. And you'll step out of the walls of the church into the community like Jesus stepped out of heaven. But it truly is a work of the Spirit. So where we can be intentional as a church and do all that we can do as human beings is that we can learn from others. We can learn from ministries like uh, Churches in Hard Places, where they focus on doing ministry in cities with high crime rates and, and murder rates. Individually, we can start inviting people into our homes with different worldviews, knowing that you are building relationships to actually give the gospel and, and be a witness of a true change. You can start interacting with those who are different or have different worldviews, not just to win an argue. An argument. You can, interact, you can even interact with other Christians, and this is a, a heavy one, understanding that how we do church at HBC is not the standard like we think it is. It's just how we do ministry here. We embrace it and we love it. This is who we are. But we don't look down on anyone else the way they, they do their thing. And so it is all through the power of the Holy Spirit, unless, I go back to that, unless they're not preaching the word of God. And of course, we need to stand up for what is wrong, call what is wrong. What call sin, sin. Amen? But sometimes it's not sin. It's just traditions. But it is through the power of the Holy Spirit and our shared values that we are able to become the church that God has called us to see to be. These are the values that we hope throughout the year um, 
will truly penetrate to our hearts and will truly believe them. Right? There's no magic potion to make us all believe these values and say this is what we value, this is who we are. Through the work of the Holy Spirit, this can become who we are. This is the, the direction that we need to be going. And out of these four categories flow our mission and vision. Out of these four categories where God is telling us who he wants us to be. And so as we close, and I'm really closing me at this time, <laughs> Acts chapter 2, verse 42, I read it this morning, Acts chapter 2, verse 42, and I want to leave us with this, the fellowship of the believers. Acts chapter 2, 40, starting at 42. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Try to just imagine yourself there as we read this. And awe came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts. Praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. So what I love about our values is that as we develop them, I then looked at the early church and saw all those values in the early church. But one key thing that really jumped out to me is that God added more people to their number. You see, God is wise, if I haven't made that clear. And so he is making disciples and he is also shaping his people into the image of his son. So when the church is actually functioning as it should be, he grows it. There was no grow the church initiative. There was no grow the church conference that the apostles attended. Just Christians filled with the spirit, devoting themselves to the word of God and loving each other. HBC is the continuation of this story. We are the rest of the chapter of Acts being written in heaven. I'm fully convinced that the Lord is able to bring many people to life in Christ through this little body. Amen? Amen. Let's bow your head so we can pray about this and talk to God about this. Prayer. Father, we thank you. When we follow the values of this world, it will cause us to miss God's purpose for our so as Christians, we must value what God values, people and his church, today and for the rest of our life. So let us ask the Lord to make these values strong in us. And for those who are not Christian, but you understand values, may you, may you too as well understand that following the values of the world will cause you as well to miss the purpose for your life. Satan is in your ear and he's in my ear telling us that we are our own authority and that we can be gods and that we know what is best for our lives. Yet the truth is that God's word is very reliable. Even if you believe it or not, when we die, we'll stand before Jesus who has been given all the power and authority. And Jesus has declared that the wages of sin is death. So yes, you will die physically, but, and we all do, but there's another death, an eternal death where those who reject Christ as Lord will spend eternity with Satan and his angels in hell. Yet Jesus has provided a way for you to be saved from that. And so for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Because if you repent of your sins and ask forgiveness, the mighty king, the, the merciful king, will forgive you. And if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, that God raised him from the dead, we'll be saved. And if you'd like to do that now, you can do that, but I'll tell you to finish this prayer, or you can meet me after, I'll be downstairs. Or if you know someone here, um, you came with someone, uh, you trust them, um, and they're a believer, I'm sure they can help you as well. But what we know about the scripture and what we know about the Lord's return is every knee will bow. And so God is giving opportunity for needs to bow right now before Jesus returns. And so, I pray you would take this opportunity here today not to see today being here just a coincidence, but 
but that you would truly bow to the top authority in this world. Father, we know that one day all knees will bow to your kingship, but you allow us to bow now before it's too late. I pray that you let your people bow to you daily and let those who have not bowed bow to you here as well. We pray that these uh, values that we spoke about will truly be our values, will be shared values. Um, I pray that we would, we would start, the, that word able will become a part of our language here at HBC. Um, that we will do whatever we can and take risks and use money and finances to live out these values. And I know we can do it through your power, through your, your spirit, as you're already doing so many things throughout the week in our lives. So we thank you and we love you. And we bring all these requests in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen.